like, my worst fear is being in last place. I can't do it. First thing when I do when I open my eyes, I thank God. I'm here again, I got the opportunity. Probably the second thing I do is check my phone and I check my style seat to see what my day's gonna look like, see what my appointments look like, what time I need to be there, and who's my first client. After that, it's just a matter of hitting the floor, doing my push-ups, brush my teeth, make sure I check on each one of my kids, you know, get dressed, get right, hit the garage, get my mind right, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and I get in my truck and I, I head to work, you know? I've been on this dude since I was uh, 16 years old. Um, the situation where he cut the whole crew hair, man. We we 10 deep going to a party. He was doing it for the love in his heart and the love of his crew. And uh, I know he loved it from day one because, you know, we won in, uh, in a situation. Everybody didn't have money, a selected few, but he took care of everybody. So uh, I instantly, instantly, you know, trying to be the leader, you know, I am instantly telling him, man, you got a gift. You should probably you know, go to Barber College since we 17 and start. He's a good dude, hands down. Uh, give you a shirt off his back, man. I done seen this dude uh, throw money people away that didn't deserve it, throw business people away that didn't deserve it. Dude that might have been shady at one point, but he's giving the benefit of the doubt. And that dude don't exist no more, not 2014, you know what I'm saying? The crazy part is, is 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 my dad had bought like these tools for this this potato field trip we was going on and he told us not to play with it. But we snuck it anyway and I hit him in his hand. I was worried about my dad finding out that we took the toys too early, but I almost slid his whole thing off, which he wouldn't have been a barber. I don't know. Nah man, luckily it was the left hand and I still got the scar right here. I didn't know you almost Cut his thumb. I did, I did. Nah, the first time we seen white meat though. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the last time we saw white Real meat. Shit. It's my turn. <laughs> it was um, awesome big brother man. Just uh talented for no reason. And probably taught me things that I learned to apply before he did. You know, so you fast forward to 2013 and he grinding has set me up years before this. I'm 13 years in the military now probably because of the things that I learned from him. I'm just proud of the man that he is now. I am in pictures of getting like the first earliest haircuts in the world, the box top, the fade. Uh, but I do remember when he tried to cut his own hair. Uh, and then told mama that he had wiped it off with, <laughs> with, with, a, with a hot towel. What? You open up to yeah. tell me a bold face line? <laughs> like, let me right. set the story up, though. I'm gonna set the story I mean, most of the time it's the same, but some days are different. Uh, I check my schedule and I see I got Tony Harris first thing in the morning. This guy is someone, he's one of my special clients, and I say that because he requires a lot of my attention as far as everything that goes into making this haircut come out the way it does. You know, that's a big haircut. I have to Beijing him, I have to do razor work, color. It's a high top fade. This guy has his own haircut. Like if you go to my style seat, you can book a Tony Harris. So shout out to Tony. So yeah, man, I care about every cut like that. Some cuts are, aren't as serious as others, but at the end of the day, they're all serious. Because you know, you're only as good as your last cut. So whether it's Tony Harris or the two-year-old, it's gotta be good. Derek come to my school and right away I noticed that this young man had extraordinary talent. I, I could see that he was a people person and I just knew right away that he would be able to uh, make a good living as a professional barber. You know, barbering is an art and Derek had a combination of both artistic skills and the ability to learn how to use the tools and when you put the both together then you have what I call a barber artist. And that's what Derek is. And uh, he uh, was very unselfish. He shared his knowledge with the other students. 
Uh, he was never a student that had the big head and said, look at me, I'm better than you. Because it's not necessary to do that. When you're good, you're just good. And, you, and your work speaks for itself. You don't have to tell anybody, you know. The proof is in the pudding, so to speak. So uh, it doesn't surprise me that uh, he's doing well. And I think he's going to have a successful tenure as long as he stays with it. When I come in, I get a good feeling. It's, I'm in my element. This is this is home for me. Anywhere there's clippers and chairs, I'm right at home. So when it comes to my home, first thing I do is I have to bless it. When I walk through those doors, I say my two bits to the man upstairs. I touch my clippers, and I just, you know, I thank God in advance, and I say, let's get it, because I know I'm going to get it. Like, it's coming. I'm here to, to make it happen. Like, someone's dependent on me, and I'm dependent on them, and I'm excited, and I appreciate it, you know? And it's just good to be able to give it to everyone. Just, you know, feed people these great looks and give them new attitudes and just new outlooks on life and everything that just comes with sitting in the chair. So you don't give it a lot of thought. I don't realize it that, you know, I may go from cutting a high top fade, shadow burst or whatever to like a two year old that to, to maybe someone of straight hair or you know a white guy, Hispanic guy, might be an older lady, she's getting a little a lady's cut. I mean, it's all type of stuff. Hey son. I've been out doing myself with these clippers for a long time. That's always been, can I get better? Who's doing something that I'm not doing? And how are they doing it? You know, like Chris and or my, my partner James and the first chair, the owner of the shop. Shout out to James. Just the way he manages it. So I need that. That motivates me to see him. Okay, this is how you run a shop. But that motivates me, being all I can be in this barber world and what it's doing for my family. Cold Jack or something, I forget what his name is, Country Town. But I used to watch him cut hair in, our, in a little two-chair barber shop in New Rose, Louisiana, where I'm from. And uh, man, he was, just, he was just an artist. I used to just sit back and hope, hope that I was like the 15th person to get a cut just so I can watch what he's doing. This is, I'm like eight, nine, 10 years old at this point. Kojak, a guy named Adrian, uh, a guy named Travis, AKA Trap. These are just guys where I grew up with and we were just little, little bootleg barbers growing up, you know, cutting our friends up. And then, in the, and then as I got older, people like here, guys like JB. He cuts that turning heads, him and Jack. Uh, they motivate me, he gets up every day. He's been doing this like almost 20 years now, we're like the same age. And it's just like, I've seen him just grow in the game while I was in the military and doing everything else but cutting hair. Still watching this guy, he's still cutting hair, still getting it. And then, you know, I get motivated in the game through, you know, not just cutting hair, just through people I know like, you know, uh, Izzy and Chalet, like seeing what they have and I want to attain these things and have the family that these people have and the things, you know, I want to be happy, you know what I'm saying? So, man, a lot of people motivate me. My mother, my father, my dad, he's still working. He's working on his third retirement. I can't stop. My dad's still going. My mom's still going. Can't stop. You know, my cousin Kendrick. 
first cousin, he's like one of my big motivators and he don't even know it. And then like, you know, my kids, you know, they really motivate me. Anon, Amani, Derek, and Tyler. Those right there, that's what it comes down to for me because you know, I had a, it was a point in my life where, you know, my biological dad really wasn't there. Boo-hoo, sad story, whatever. But the good thing about it is it really made me appreciate my kids. And so I thank him for that. It's got to be love, man. It's. It all starts with love, man. I, I love my Clippers. I've loved them since I was seven years old. I love my wife, I love my kids, I love my mom. Like, this is, this is what made me. This is what, you know, I just talked to my mother yesterday and we spoke briefly and, uh, you know, she just kept just looking at me and just like, I'm just so proud of you. And then the last word she said to me, was I don't have to worry about you no more. And I was just like, wow, that was powerful. And you know, that's what motivates me. That's what keeps me going. Words like that, my wife stopped me and just being like, I'm just thankful for all you do. Like, I'm important. And I mean, like, my worst fear is just being in the last place. I can't, I can't do it. 